Oh, Hi. hello. Welcome back to the show. Happy oh. <laughs> Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I added a clap in my theme song, so you're welcome. Oh, I like that. Welcome back to, to the, the show. show. Da, da, da. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm so excited for you all to be here today because let me tell you, this craft that Alicia is bringing you is a chef's kiss. Yes. It's such a good craft for if you are making a present for like a baby shower, mm -hmm. um, a newborn, or really if you want it as like a shelf sitter for yourself. Yeah, it would be really cute as like a birth announcement or anything along those lines, which you know that a lot of the stuff we make is customizable. So like everything on this, you can change um, like their birthday, their, um, the colors you use, all of that. So I really, really love this project. It's one of my favorite ones that I've actually made. So, and it's super easy. Yeah, it is. It's just, I mean, we are gonna be using um, torch paste. Mm -hmm. So if you all are not familiar with torch paste, it is a paste that you apply to wood. Mm -hmm. You use your heat gun to heat it up and it gives you that wood burned look. Yes. Um, very, very professional. Um, we love, love using torch paste. Yes. And that is something, um, the link for torch paste should be down below this mm -hmm. video. Um, it's something that we get off Etsy. Yes. Um, so we, there is there's someone that come up with this mm -hmm. specific paste and it we love it and there's also something out there it's a torch pin i see it advertised all the time uh -huh. and i'm like i haven't bought one but like loki want to try to plug it into my cricket and see if it would write with oh my the, cricket. like the quill pin the torch quill pin we have one do we we do because i've played around with it and it's it's basically the same thing except you use the small um, like a thin, like the ba basswood yeah, or something, yeah. and you ride on it, it's the same concept. Oh my gosh, I've been missing out this, this whole time. I've been like, <laughs> wow, I really want to do that. I just haven't vocalized it to anybody, so wow, it was good to know. <laughs> you got to vocalize these I know, things. I know, I know, I know. Vocalize these things. <laughs> so drop us an emoji if you are super, super excited mm -hmm. for this craft. Um, while I wait on these emojis to roll in, mm -hmm. one thing that we want to make sure that you all know is today, we were, we're kind of switching up our deals every day. A little day. I'm Doing a little switcheroonie. So um, today our deal that we have is the $30 off our yearly membership using the code CRAFT at checkout. Mm -hmm. um, the link, Sadie has dropped the link for you. It is pinned at the top. If you are not a member, um, what we are, we are a craft education business where we bring you, you, ha you sign up for a membership and we bring you cut files, education, motivation, fonts. and fonts. <laughs> Alicia's a big font girl. I'm a font girl. <laughs> Everything you need to know to master your Cricut. Mm -hmm. um, we bring it to you and we thoroughly enjoy and absolutely love what we do. Mm -hmm. um, it is our passion. Absolutely. And we, we love seeing your all's creations. Um, I'm seeing mm -hmm. all, all these emojis dropping. Yes. I'm excited. And when y'all become members, like you join our private Facebook group where we are constantly posting project ideas. We do member only um, lives every so often. So you guys get to have exclusive projects that are never even seen on the interwebs. Right. So I think that's pretty cool. And we give some good ones. Like we save the good yes. ones for yes. that sometimes. So we do. Um, if you guys are looking to be a part of our community, um, we are doing, it was $30 off for the yearly, yes. right? So yes. yeah, that's awesome. That's a good deal. And one other thing that we have just recently added is our large, like very large, we have expanded our library. So mm -hmm. our goal used to, we would do about 30 cut files, 30, 40 cut files a month. Mm -hmm. um, last month we dropped 1,063 for wow, so one month. A thousand and sixty-three. A thousand and sixty-three. I didn't think, listen, I believe in our team. I do. But yes. I was like, a thousand? No. No. Yeah, no. I, honestly, when Tanner, <laughs> when Tanner come to us with this idea, I was like, get your you life know, together. <laughs> I, I love you. We've just got too much on us. We can't do this. Yeah. But, um. Oh, is it me? <gasps> oh. oh no, I'm, it's because I'm sitting on my cord. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, sorry. Awesome. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't think it was possible. Yeah. But with Courtney's hard work, all of our designers hard work, 
um, we were able to pull it off for you guys and we're yeah. going to continue to pull it off for you guys until we build our library and really give you what you all deserve. Yes. And, and those are usually released the first Thursday of every month. Yeah. So uh -huh. love that. They are. Yes. Very so exciting. we will go ahead. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you drop those in the comments. Uh -huh. I will be here um, kind of overseeing comments. We'll try to get back to you now. If I do reply, it will be under my name. It will be under Lauren McCoy. Sadie will try to reply with some mm -hmm. Maker's Gonna Learn because we're still after the whole, <laughs> after the whole, um, the hack, hack, hack <laughs> debacle, if y'all missed that, wow. Um, yeah. We're still kind of being really, if like, Leary we don't who, want a whole bunch of people logged in yeah, to our so channel. Yeah, so I'm logged in to my channel. So if yeah. I reply to you, it will be under my name. And then Sadie mm -hmm. will reply to you all under the Maker's Gonna Learn name. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, make sure you drop those and we will answer those throughout the live. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get started. I guess we're going to go Let's ahead and get it. crafty, y'all. Yes. Okay. So lots of things on the craft table today. It looks like a lot, but like this project is very... I want to say it's pretty simple. There's no like crazy steps that you're going to have to do. Um, but let me just start by showing you guys everything you're going to need. So let's go overhead and I'll kind of go through the supplies. Um, I will say, so basically this project, we are taking a photo and turning it into an SVG. So this is the whole thing. Like you could do this with, mm, I want to say virtually any photo. Um, I haven't tested it out with wood burning and like an actual picture of like people, um, but we're going to be doing it with a handprint, which I think is so cute. Um, we're just using a little baby handprint. If you wanted to do this with your own baby, all you would have to do is paint their hand, stamp it, and take a photo of it. And I'll show you guys all those steps um, afterwards, but that is part, technically part of the spot list, just to have a picture of a handprint. Yes. Um, and I, it's even better if it's like someone you know, like if it's for the baby that you're doing it for. And then we've obviously got our stuff pre-cut. I've got, this is the torch paste. So this is the real deal. This is what you guys are gonna need. Can y'all, can they see that, Sadie? Am I centered? Um, so this is the torch paste. We have an Etsy supplier that we get this from. It's like a orange, it's literally an orange paste. So pretty crazy looking. It's so fluorescent. It, honestly, it's like super pretty. I love it. I know. It's just, I love that color. I wonder if they color it orange no. or if it's naturally orange because it's torch paste. So I, I wonder. Um, and I'm going to be, it comes with a spatula, but I'm going to be using a paintbrush today. Uh, you're going to need a weeding tool for cutting your vinyl out. I've got a stain. I'm using just like a natural stain. I would not recommend using a dark stain on this project because the wood burning part is very dark. So like if I went in here with like a Jacobine or you could probably get away with early American. I know that's a popular stain, um, but I would stick to a lighter like natural golden pecan is a good option. Um, something light and you need something to stain with. We've just used a cut up t-shirt. You're going to need some gloves, a measuring tape, something to sand with. I've got more gloves just in case. And then I'm using stencil vinyl. So um, I use this on a lot of our projects. You could probably get away with permanent vinyl. You just need to make sure you're sanding your blocks like super, super well. Um, because if you go in with a uh, permanent vinyl on wood, it's gonna rip your wood grain up a little bit. And then I've just got like a really well loved strong grit mat that is actually not super sticky anymore. <laughs> Honestly, like, um, Honestly, I don't even rate our mats based on what they say they are. I yeah. just feel it. Yeah. I'm well, like standard. Yeah. Standard. Or like, strong grip. Light grip. <laughs> yeah. So I don't Pat really Pat. base it off. And I feel like if you're an avid Cricut user, like y'all know what I mean. Um, we do have a couple questions. Couldn't okay. read the brand of torch paste. Maybe. Um, this is literally torch paste brand. Like I think if you search this on Etsy, that's what you'll find. Yeah, and then Minwax for our stain brand. Um, the torch paste does not have an odor. The stain does have an odor. Actually, I never smelled this, but like, it smells like nothing. 
It smells oh, like they, glue, maybe. Yeah. Like, if anything, it might smell like glue a little bit. And the only thing is, once you start, once you use a torch paste, the heat gun on the torch paste, you're going to start smelling burned wood. Yes. But that's, I mean, as far as odor, when you burn it, that's the only odor that I have ever smelled. Yeah. It's just that actual wood, like, changing. Yes, yes. So, can I airdrop photos onto this computer? I'm curious. Yes. I can? You can. Okay, listen. I'm going to show you guys. I want to show you how you can do this with your phone directly to your computer. So if you're taking an, a photo of an image, which is the whole project is turning an image into an SVG, um, usually your handprints aren't gonna be like a picture. It's gonna be like a painting of a handprint. So I'm gonna take a picture with my phone and I'm gonna airdrop it to our computer and then I'll show you guys how to plug it into Design Space and actually remove the background. We're using Design Space for this entire project. I saw someone was asking, um, what program we use, Design Space, for the entire thing because they have, you have to have Cricut access to have the background remover tool. Yes. Okay, do. so if you are a Cricut access member, you will be able to remove your background. I want to say there are apps on your phone. If you don't have Cricut access, if you just use the free Cricut access, you may be able to remove the background on your photo through another app. I wish I would have gotten some apps for you guys, like but, off the top of my head. But if you take the picture and it is black and white, like mm -hmm. if you take the picture of the hand and yeah. it's black and white, there may be a square around it if you can't remove the background, but you could just contour that square out. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So you, there's ways around it, you know, there's ways to get like the the image that you want. So. What I'm gonna do, I've just got my phone here, and I'm just gonna take a picture. I'm gonna fit this perfectly inside of my photo box. And then if we're overhead, this is what my image looks like. Just like that, you guys see that? Okay. And then what I'll do is airdrop this. I'm wondering, is our airdrop on that computer? It would go straight to Tanner, right? It should pull up. Um... Tanner Bell? Does it have an airdrop option? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's try it. Let's... <gasps> there it is. Okay. We're going to go ahead, accept that, and open it in photos. So maybe they have changed. Someone said you don't have to have Cricut access to remove oh. the background anymore. That might have been one of the updates that they gave them. Um, but before, I know for a fact that you did have to have Cricut access because when I did a... Mm -hmm. Those made those stickers. The I did doggy that for stickers. The doggy stickers. Mm -hmm. It was a Cricut Access um, feature at that point. But yeah. Cricut just did a big, um, a big update. update. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna go upload my image. Let's browse, and let's see if it just went into my recents. Let me see if I can scooch this to the side, and we'll just kind of click and drag our image in. Okay, so I just click and drag my image. It might load. Come on in. Maybe I should save it. I'll save it to the computer. Make it a little bit easier. Let's see, it's saved in my... Last time, so you can email. You can airdrop this to yourself or you can email it to yourself. Totally whatever works for you. Um, last time I emailed it to myself and saved it in my downloads. This time I just uploaded it to my photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the image in. Uh, maybe, there we go. Uh, wow, that's a large image. <laughs> so whenever you're doing the background remover tool, sometimes it takes a minute to load everything. I'm gonna select complex because we are gonna be getting into like the nitty gritty of this handprint. And then I'll select continue. And you can go ahead and hit remove background. This is gonna remove the bulk of the background. And what we'll do after it does that, it will take a second because it is a very detailed image. We're gonna zoom in super close. And I am gonna just make sure that there are no gray areas here in between the fingerprints. I want it to be as detailed as possible. So this actually did really well when I pulled it in. So we don't, we're not gonna have to do a whole bunch. But what you can do, this is my favorite tool to use in the background remover, is this select option. It just, what you do is zoom all the way in. I mean, we can get close, you guys. You, can you see the gray areas? I'm hoping you guys can see that decently well. Um, what I do is just click on these images. Do you see how that disappears? Magic. 
it's like it just knows what to do. I know. I love that. So what I did was just go in here and click on any gray areas that I didn't want. And I will say that when you guys go to cut this, it's gonna be very, I think Lauren actually came in when I was cutting it. She was like, is your machine okay? Cause it's like. <laughs> I was sitting in um, at my desk and I was working, I was doing a bunch of computer work and I heard this awful sound and I was like, what is that? And so I got up and went in our workspace area and I was like, is there something wrong with with a cricket like what's going on what is this and i was just like so confused i was like no it's just me i'm just cutting handprints and it it's because you get all these little crevices and you don't have to go in and get all these teeny weeny ones but i do like to get as detailed as possible because i mean this is like an actual handprint of like your baby or your friend's baby or whatever so i try to get in there and the, the tv is like really far away from me you guys so i'm trying to see what i can see but i feel like that's that's pretty good. And it'll just depend on how you get the print on there and how much detail that shows. Um, you may take like 10 minutes to do that. I think the first time I did it, it took me a lot longer to actually go in and delete out some of that gray area. And another thing you can do if you want, well, I zoomed in way too close. If you wanna take just the erase tool, you can change the eraser size right here and you can just erase like that. Obviously we don't want to do that. So you can go back if you like erase too hard. If you want to make this teeny weeny, you can go in just like this and kind of erase that way. Um, I don't want to do that right now, but if you needed to do some like fine detail work, you could do that that way. And then that's it. So I do you... want to say Jill McDonald's, uh, she dropped us a comment and told us there's an app called, um, magic eraser it looks like a pencil erasing an orange box to reveal the checkerboard mm -hmm. and she said it was free so that is something that yeah. you all could uh really i told thank you jill for that comment if you all need a free background remover what was there it called again uh magic eraser magic eraser okay okay, okay. cool i love that so we are not doing a print and cut image we're going to be using the actual just simple cut image i'm going to go ahead and upload that there's our little hand print. We're gonna add to canvas. Okay, so whenever you pull your image into Design Space, it is literally gigantic. It's 14 by 13 right now. I want to first of all, lock it. I wanna make sure this is locked. What I'm gonna do is take a measuring tape, go overhead, and I'm gonna measure because this image right here is the real image of the handprint. I want this to be like true to size on my block. So also it's a good thing to recognize if you're doing like a bigger kid's handprint, you don't wanna use a block that's like too small. So make sure that you're getting a block that's big enough. This is just a four by four cube that I've got here. And I think this is like three by three. Um, but what I'm gonna do is measure from the outermost edges of the handprint. So this handprint is about three inches wide. So what I'm gonna do back in design space is change this 14 to three. And that's gonna give us our true to size. It's also gonna fit on our four by four cube that we have. And then what we'll do underneath it is add our text. And we're just gonna go, we've got three sides to this um, design. If you can go over here, I'll show you guys. We've got the side with the handprint. I'm just gonna put the birthplace and then we've got the name, that's my baby. And then I just did an initial on top. So now that we've got the handprint side, let's go ahead and we'll just start with this one. I use the um, High Hopes font for this. We're just gonna put Knoxville, Tennessee. Shout out to Knoxville. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, in our fonts, you can go to system fonts and that's all of your downloaded fonts. They're just right there for you to use, which I really like. 
So all your NGL fonts are going to be right here. Are you serious? Yeah, girl. How did I not know this? Yeah. I guess you're the font queen and I'm not, but I literally, like, I learned something today. <laughs> I did not know I could go to system fonts. Yeah. I just always type in the fonts. I know. So I did that forever too. And I was like, listen, Linda, because, you know, you download all the fonts you want to use. I don't want to go through all of the other fonts. I want just the fonts I downloaded. And it won't just be MGL fonts. It'll be like if you download any fonts. Right. That it's any ones that you've downloaded onto your computer. Also, sign language fonts, love that. I think we have high hopes. And if not, I can show you guys where to get it from. There she is, Knoxville, Tennessee. And then what I'm gonna do is make a square. I'm gonna make this four by four. And let me double check my measurements on my cube. This should be, it's like three and three quarters almost. I'm not good with measurements, you guys. I'm an eyeballer, if you didn't know that already. <laughs> I'm, I'm an like, exact gosh. measure. Yeah, Lori is an exact <laughs> measure. That's how we're different, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay, so I'm going to make this square in design space, four by four, and I'm just going to change it to a tan color. So this is like the base of our, um, like our, of our cube. Sorry, I couldn't spit it out. And I'm going to bring this to front. I'm going to bring my handprint to front. So just like that. And then... I'm going to bring this to the front and I'm just going to shrink it down until it fits within my square. So just like that, you can highlight it all. I'm going to align them. I'm going to center them horizontally and there's one side. Easy as that. And that's honestly like probably the part, hardest part was like cleaning up that handprint and all that. Yes. So you can do whatever you want for the other sides. I have seen people do um, like the weight, the length, like all of the stats, like the birth stats, which I think would be really super cute. But if you just want to like keep it simple, um, what you'll do is go ahead and plug in two more four by four squares. And I'm going to do an initial on one. So I'm going to go ahead and make my square brown. And I'm using the same high hopes font for this one. And all I'm going to do is just make this really big. And you could just do the letter, but I really like doing the dark. If we can go overhead, I like to do this dark so it looks like it's inset. You guys know, no, like on the classic kids' blocks, they look like that. Yeah, like they have the, like if it was like a blue or a yes. yellow or a green block, it has that around it. Yeah. And then the letter is colored as well. Yes, and I love that look. So what I did for that um, is I go in here, grab a shape. I'm just going to get a rounded square. And I'm going to put this right in here. I'm just going to leave a border. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just going to leave a border around it. And then you can go ahead and just center that. And then you can go and pull your R in. Let me bring that to the front so y'all can see it. And I'm going to also change the color so you can know what's going on. So it would be like that. Easy, right? And then we'll do our third one. This one has the name on it. And we use the Freca script font for this one. So I'm going to do a four by four square. Let me change the color. And the script font is called Freca. This is one of my favorite fonts. Also love that name. I don't know why. I don't know where that name came from, but I really like the name of that font. Freca. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds very sassy. Okay, so we don't have that one, which is fine. Let's go into the Makers Gonna Learn website. So if you're new here and you haven't been on our website, this is the Makers Gonna Learn font page. So we've got tons of different categories. Um, we have some new fonts, some sketchy new fonts, which is awesome. But I am going to just type in Freca into the computer. And sometimes it takes a second to load. Is everybody like, are we good? Are we on the same page? I mean, listen, we've got uh, about 200, right now I'm seeing 221 watching. <gasps> Stop. And we don't have that many. I mean, they're, they're, okay. they're like laser focused. You guys are in like it. You it. guys are, <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Okay, here's uh, the Freca font. It sounds like I'm saying a cuss word, but I'm really not. I'm really not. <laughs> so this is just another little hacky hack. Just uh, hit save. On your document, let's uh, overwrite the cloud version. I'm gonna save this and then I'm going to view and reload and my font will be in there. So whenever you download a new font onto your computer, um, you will have to reload Design Space. 
and make sure that you save. Make because, sure you save. Yes. Yeah, you can you you can lose your work if you do not save. Yes. There's Freca. That's our font. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and do Ruby Claire Griffith. And I want y'all to know this is just a little design tippy tip from me. I love how it's a, it's a tippy tip and a hacky hack. <laughs> I don't mean to call it that. Okay, so whenever you you can just you could just technically hit enter, but I like to have more control than that. And honestly, look at the gap between Ruby and Claire, and then look at the gap between Claire and Griffith. That bothers me. Okay, but wait, I might be teaching you something here. Okay, but were you were you gonna do them all separate? Yeah. Okay. Go to the top. You want me to use line space? Nope. I okay. want you to go to advanced. Okay. Ungroup to lines. Stop it. <laughs> you taught me something and I taught you something. Dude, that is revolutionary. I didn't know that. <laughs> Y'all, I've been doing, I've been duplicating my lines. I've been duplicating my lines for since I've been working here. I did not know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So let's go back if you guys missed it. So I don't like the space in between these. And Lauren told me, go up to advanced, ungroup to lines, and then you can scoot all these. All of them are separate. That is, my mind is blown. So you can ungroup to letters, and all of your letters are going to be separate, and you can turn your letters that way. Or you can ungroup to lines, and all of your lines are going to be separate. I love that. Also, I want to address, Jessa asked a question um, we don't actually, I don't want to get all super off topic, but I do want to tell you, let you know that we see your question. Mm -hmm. um, when you come to, when it comes to space on your computer, you can get external hard drives if you need to, mm -hmm. if you do get a computer that has a smaller hard drive. But I am the type of person, like the more space I have, I'm like, yes, like the more yeah. space, the better. Oh, so that's, absolutely. That, that's our recommendation. But if you don't have the money for a larger space on your computer, bigger hard drive, you can get external hard drives to keep all of your stuff on, just yeah. so you know. And listen, I am like, I will download, if I could just go on to the website and download all the fonts automatically, like I would do that. I download so many fonts and files and like don't really use them or I do use them and I just keep them. I don't like go and delete anything. Right. Um, and my computer is fine. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so. font, font sizes are very small anyway. Yeah. And so I they're not going to mention that. Yeah. They're not going to take up a lot of room. Yeah. 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 So. Um, yeah, but Webby, or yeah, Webby one day, you can never have too much hard drive space. That's the truth. Uh huh. So once you have designed everything, what you're going to do before you cut it is click and drag. I'm going to attach everything. So it's going to turn it all the same color, which is fine because we're not printing vinyl. We are just printing on stencil vinyl. We are printing on stencil vinyl. And I keep saying printing. Cutting. We're cutting stencil mm -hmm. vinyl. We are not printing today. Um, we're going to be cutting on stencil vinyl, so it doesn't really, it doesn't matter. And then after you do that, you're just going to go to make it. And then there is your stuff. And you will just hit continue, select your Cricut device. And then it's going to pop up and ask you to select the material. And we would click stencil vinyl. That is an option. See if that will refresh so you have the option up top. Oh, it's not connecting for some reason. Continue. It gave me the option and then I selected maker USB. Here we go. We want this one, right? Yeah, the one that's connected. Uh -huh. And then um, it should pull up our base material. There she is. And then you can just browse your materials. What did we do? Stencil. Vinyl, listen, I'm a hardcore stencil vinyl user. If you are painting or wood burning or anything like that, stencil vinyl. And I'll also say this is the um, 143 vinyls. I don't know. This is, so they have two different paint masks. This is the mint green one from uh, 143 vinyl, tried and true. This is the best one. And I've used the Oracle blue for years. The eight, I think it's 851. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a sign maker, you'll know. But yes. this is like the best. And there's a yellow on there that works really good as well, but not for wood. I'll, I'll get on a wood tangent. I'm not even going to do that. But I won't do that to y'all today. So a couple things. Um, yeah. Hold on just a minute. Where did I see this? 
Um, Daisy asks, if I have an iPad, how can I download the fonts? If you are a member, if you are a uh, Maker's Gonna Learn member, there is a whole tutorial mm -hmm. using the iPad that you definitely need to check out in your courses. I think it's part of the 30-day uh, challenge, I think. If not, it's a separate course, but check that out. Um, that's a great, uh, Donna said that she saves her cut files because that's what takes up the most room to Google yes. for easy access. <gasps> what a good idea. Great tip. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. And Trisha, now the pace that we linked, it is a small business. So this, we were, we linked that because it is a small business. I don't know Which if Which is they amazing, will. by yes. the way. But she said that she found a recipe, I guess, where you can mix eight tablespoons of xanthium gum Thicket, xanthium gum, one tablespoon ammonium chloride, and a half a cup of water to get the same thing. Well, heck, that's a whole science experiment. That's awesome. Uh, Y'all know I'm a, I'm all about my science and science, science experiments. I'm falling apart over here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is doing. I'm like hiding him under there. Sorry, guys. Oh my gosh, well, that's awesome. Is xanthan gum, you can use that for a lot of stuff. When I, I used to work in a pottery field, and we use that to um, do screen printing on pottery. That mm -hmm. was what we used. Is my microphone messed up? Again. What's new, you guys? What's new? What's new? <laughs> okay. Before we get started, what you're going to do, so I've got my wood block. This thing is heavy. My first one was not this heavy. And yes, you can, this is recorded. You can watch it later. Um, if we are going too fast for you and you have a question, make sure you drop that question so we can go over it again if you have any other questions, okay? Yeah, yeah. So what I'm gonna do, this is relatively smooth, so I'm not super worried. Now, like where it was actually cut is a little bit rougher, um, but I'm gonna try to do my prints on these smoother edges. What you can do, and what I recommend, is starting with a lower grit and then working your way up to a higher grit. So actually, this is my lower grit, this is my higher grit. And so I'm gonna sand three different sides. You could sand the whole thing if you wanted to, but you just wanna make sure that you sand it until it is completely smooth. Why don't you explain to them the grit, the different grits of sandpaper, because I really think this is truly important if you're working with wood. Oh yeah, okay, so I like to think about it like this. So the higher the number, the more little grits there are. To, and the more grits there are, the smoother it will be, yes. if that makes sense. So, so if there's the like, higher the number, the smaller the particles. Yes. So if there's 80 grits, it's going to like rough up your surface more than 100 grit would. So in my brain, it was always backwards. And I was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. But so like a 400 grit, you're going to be like smooth. You're going to be smooth. Mm -hmm. And 80 grit, you're going to be like roughing it up. Like if you need to glue something together, you're going to sand both things with 80 grit, smash them together because it's going to have crevices from where you sand it, if that right. makes sense. So I've got a hundred and um, I wanna say this is probably like a 160, 140, something like that. Yeah. Um, but you can feel, like I can feel and know that this is smoother than this so one. So the lower the number, the grit on your sandpaper, just to reiterate, the lower the number, mm -hmm. the rougher that it's gonna make your wood. Yes. The higher the number, the smoother, better finish you're gonna have. Yep, and Carol, listen, I, I feel you. I was right there too. I had to, like my husband probably explained that to me like 15 times and I was like, I'll get it. I'll get it. Eventually I'll get it. <laughs> and even now, like even now I'm like, wait, let me think. It's like whenever you know a B from a D. Yeah, but you still have like, to hold that. You have, still have to hold your hands up to make it's this. literally the same concept. <laughs> so it's okay. And you don't have to understand it to do this project. Just sand it really well until it's smooth all over. This side is pretty smooth. So I'm just, and you don't want it, if you go to a really low grit, it's gonna make streaks on your wood and like not cute. We don't want that. So make sure you're using the right grit. And those are pretty smooth already. And then just make sure that you, they are wiped off really well. And what we'll do after that is go ahead and apply our stencils. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I thought I brought, I thought we had an exacto knife, but, um, mic you know. again. Do what? Your mic again. Can you guys hear me? Can you Move hear it me? down to the front. Yeah, maybe that'll help. I don't know why it's snagging. It's like snagging on something. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, 
Marina asked, can you use this paste and heat gun on a framed wood panel or does it have to be a solid wood piece? You can use it on a on a wood panel. It does not have to be like solid wood all the way through. Oh yeah, totally, totally. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just line up our little square on here. Can you guys see? Can y'all see that? Okay. And then you're just gonna kind of squeegee it on there. And then what we're gonna do is peel off our masking. Maybe, we might get it. And you wanna use like, um, I don't use a strong grip uh, transfer, but for some reason this is super sticky. Just use like a standard grip um, transfer tape for this. These letters, like this particular font is very delicate whenever you mask it. So just be super careful when you're pulling off your masking tape, not to pull up the, the middles of your letters or anything like that. Can I just say like Trisha is coming in clutch with all of these great hacks today too. Okay, let's hear um, it. She said, I do a lot of sanding in my shop and I hate the dust everywhere. I lay extremely used transfer tape under my project and help helps reduce the dust in dust in the area. That's genius. I mean, dang, you are like psh, blowing my mind today. Listen, Coming I up love with a problem solver. Yes, I love that. We're all about it. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so there's our first side. So cute. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and apply our um, burn paste to this. Um, and I've actually worked with this wood burning stuff before, the torch paste, and I stained first, and it just doesn't look as good. So I'm going to wood burn first and then stain. So um, what I'm gonna do is apply my torch paste. So I've got gloves and they have a spatula, which you can actually like apply this on here with just like this. You do not want it thicker in other areas, so you kind of want to spread it out so that it is very um, even and spread all the way over every single detail. So just spread it out like this, a good even coat. You do not want it to be super thick. The If it's too thick, it'll bubble up whenever you apply the heat, it's gonna bubble up and then um, it just it doesn't look as good, I think. So make it really smooth. If you get too much, take your squeegee and just kind of like, you can like scrape if you get too much and you can scoop it back into your jar. And I'm gonna go over the letters as well. I'm going all different directions also because I want to make sure I'm really getting in there with the wood paste. So you, correct me if I'm wrong, Alicia. Okay. You can use removable vinyl, however, we we like the stencil vinyl because it doesn't bring up the wood grains as, e as much as the removable vinyl. But if all you have is removable vinyl and you don't want to go buy the um, stencil vinyl, mm -hmm. it can be done. Just know that it may bring up small portions of like the wood. Yes, exactly, exactly. So yeah, that that the permanent and uh, removable vinyl, they just stick really well. <laughs> so yeah. it sticks to the wood grain. The stencil vinyl, it doesn't have as high of a tack, but it still gets the job done. So um, what you'll do is put that all on and then we're just gonna take this off very delicately. And voila. Oops, that stencil sticking to my gloves. Okay, and then I'm gonna let it dry for a minute and then I will weed out all those little parts. But while it's doing that, while it's drying, you wanna wait about mm, like two minutes in between um, before you start actually applying heat to it. And I think it actually says specifically on here, apply a thin layer and then let the paste absorb or dry for two minutes. Then you take the stencil off. We only took the stencil off already, which is fine uh, yeah. because that's how I've done it in the past. But um, you do definitely do want to let it sit because it doesn't burn as well if it's not absorbed into the wood a little bit. Right. Um, Francis says, what about the Cricut brand that came in my bundle? Any, really, any, if the, if it's the, if you're talking about the um, transfer 
or the the stencil vinyl, then yes, the Cricut pen should work. But mm -hmm. Ty also brought up a good point. He said maybe this would be a good use for Dollar Tree vinyl because it's oh, not as yeah. sticky. Yeah, definitely. And Lord knows I bought a bunch of that. When I saw that at the Dollar Tree, I was like, give me a buggy. Yep. I was like, I'm give trying Give me it. a buggy. <laughs> I'm trying it. Oh, I saw a thing on Facebook the other day, and it was like, what do you call a buggy? Like, do you call it a buggy, or do you call it a cart? Shopping, shopping cart. cart. What do you call it? Yeah. Let us know. What do you call it? Tell Is us. It, tell us what you call it. I'm very curious. Curious. Because I feel like buggy is a southern thing. It's a very southern thing. So, do you call it a buggy? I call it a buggy. Okay. I've always called it a buggy. It was um, It was like comparing different things. What do you call a Coke, a buggy, and a hair tie? Or a hair bow? I call it a hair bow, a, a Coke. Hair bow. And a Coke can be like anything. A Coke is anything. A Coke is a Pepsi, a Coke is a Sprite, a, Sprite. a Coke is a whatever. <laughs> a Dr. Pepper, a root beer, it's all Coke. Yep, it's all Coke. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Everybody's saying cart, shopping cart. Oh, yeah. We've got a couple buggies in there. Y'all, they must be from around here. That's so funny. It's so crazy how there's different little subcultures in the United States. Cart, cart, more carts. More carts. Okay. And so I think that just um, solidified our thoughts that it's probably, call it a cola. A cola? Okay. A cola. But okay, fun fact. Did you know there's so many people, and this must be like, I don't know if it's a Virginia thing, um, but I grew up in Hancock County, which is on the Virginia border, but it was like all of my friends that were from Virginia called it called them pops really which yeah. i thought was a very northern thing yeah me too i've got illinois family and they all say pop yeah but it I, so i don't know is there a line there that below, <laughs> below the virginia city? must be the line <laughs> i don't know <laughs> oh trolley in the uk i was oh. just about to say that in the yeah. uk they call them trolley trolley is trolley. cute you guys that's cute i want to call it a trolley shopping trolley give me give me a trolley please Someone the other day, we were, <laughs> <laughs> could you get me a trolley? We were talking about how me and Caitlin were faking British accents the other day, and I was like, that might be like rude to some people, but we love a British accent. It's like British accents get me in my heart. Like, I, love I love it. it. Yeah, me too. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna put my gloves back on, and I'm going to do the name. Julia says I'm Hispanic, and we call all cereals cornflakes. Uh -uh. I can see that. <laughs> I can see it. I love it. That's I absolutely awesome. love it. Oh my gosh. I never even thought about that. I love that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to dip my brush into the gel for this part. While you're doing that, uh, Jill says, I'm in Ontario, Canada, and we say a hoodie for a hooded sweatshirt, which is what I call it. It's yeah, a hoodie. Yeah, we call it a hoodie. Yeah. But people in Saskatchewan, Canada, call it a bunny hug. <laughs> Stop. I want to call it a bunny, a bunny hug now. Hug. That's amazing. <laughs> I have never in my life heard that, you guys. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, I love all the different things. That's hilarious. I want someone say says in Western New York it's a pop, and in Massachusetts it's a tonic. A tonic? But when I think of a tonic, I think of like an what you mix drink. with an alcoholic beverage. That's a tonic to me. Like a seltzer water. Yeah. That is so funny. I love hearing these. They're loving our accents. Y'all, one of my favorite things is if y'all, for those that don't know, we do Makers University and we're getting to do our, which this Thursday is our last Zoom call that we're going to be I doing. Know. So sad. I love, I love hearing your all's accents. Like I wish I could, mm -hmm. we could have more like one-on-one -on -one conversations and I could hear your all's accents because I love it. I love the Zooms. And listen, at first we were like, let's do each uh, a craft producer a week. And like, I got on the second week and I was like, can I just come to all of them? Yeah. Cause like, I love to talk to you guys. I know. And if you didn't know, if you joined Maker U, we were doing a free Zoom call for like the first four weeks for that first graduating class. Uh -huh. So and we've been chit chatting with all the Maker U members. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off. I do not hesitate to peel my stuff off. I am gonna let it dry a little bit before I peel off the middles. But be very careful when you are taking the transfer tape off of this particular font because it's very dainty and elegant and skinny. So just got to be super careful. Dainty. Dainty. So we've got both sides. Can you guys see what's going on here? And then I'm going to just be super careful. And I'm going to go ahead and put my R on. I'm going to take these gloves off. It's hard to play with that sticky 
mm -hmm. uh, transfer with these gloves on. But we are like, almost, we're getting there. We are almost done. Sam, the name of this paste is called Torch Paste. And we did have someone um, tell us that it was sold out. But there was a comment where she gave us the, um, and Sadie, if you don't care to go back and find that, and we'll repost that, um, she found a recipe that you could make your own Torch Paste. Okay. Do you push buttons for elevators or do you mash them? You mash them. You mash buttons. You don't push them. Oh, I think I say push. Okay, listen. I want to show you guys something that I, I did. I'm think just I go in between both. Now that yeah, I think about I it. Yeah, maybe I do too. I can't. Yeah. I don't know. So I accidentally weeded out the wrong part of the R. So you guys can see right here. So I weeded out the R. If that's the case, my R is going to be wood burned, which I wanted to do the opposite. Um, but we'll just show you guys both ways. Since we already did this one, you guys can see what it's gonna look like if you did ch chose to do the other way. So this R will actually be dark, and then we'll do a dark border too. I'll add a dark border, and so then we'll have it both ways. But I didn't want you guys to be like, hey, that's not what she thought she was doing. So make sure if you do want it this way, you need to weed out that inner square. So if you want this look, weed out the inner square, if you want this look, you need to weed out your R and then the outer border. And I'm just going to pull this off. This one will be easier to actually pull off the transfer tape because it's not so um, detailed. Carol said, how many syllables does the word hi have for you? The further south, the more syllables. <laughs> hi. Honey, I think hi. Hey. It has like 12 <laughs> syllables. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, my gosh. This transfer tape is thick. And the only thing, like, I, normally I would say masking tape, transfer tape is the way to go because it's not as sticky, but you have to be able to see what you're doing. So that's why with mm -hmm. this, it's important that you use, like, a clearer transfer yes, tape. Yes, absolutely. Maybe even a, uh, I bet you could do, like, a contact paper. Oh, for sure, yeah. The stencil vinyl is very, um, what's the word? Forgiving, like you can use quite a variety of transfer tapes to put it on there. Like it's not very finicky in that way. Um, it's being finicky with this transfer tape today though. So, but normally, normally, normally. it's easy to deal with. <laughs> yes, Cheryl, the burn markers do work, work well, but with this specific project, it wasn't something that we could put through the Cricut um, for it to draw out those, these shapes. So that's why we're doing the torch paste today. So have you put the burn marker in the Cricut? I did in the silhouette. Okay. I put it in the silhouette. Did it work well? Oh yeah. Okay. It worked great. Well, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm trying to, I didn't know we had one and now I'm pumped because mm -hmm. I was like wanting to do that forever. Quill pen is the name of it. Quill pen. Sure. That's interesting. Is it quill pen? It's back there. It's in a box. Okay. Okay. Sorry, this is taking forever, guys. We will get there eventually. <laughs> and this side was not sanded nearly as smooth as, this is like the cut edge. This is like the rough edge of the wood. So I'm curious if you guys will be able to tell the difference between like the smooth edge and the rough edge. I guess we'll find out. We, we are fitting. If it would ever come off, it keeps resticking. Okay. We're getting places, people. Here we go. Here we go. Or maybe it's called scorch pin. Maybe that's Scorch that pin. Scorch that's marker. it, Lauren. That's it. There is a quill pin. There is. That's for um, the full. Is the quill pin for the foiling? I don't remember. There's a couple different ones. Well, I was thinking the quill pin was for paper quilling, but it's not. Okay. Well, I just don't know. And I'm I'm ready to use that scorch pen. I'm really excited. I no, you know what? We'll go back there and look at it. Yeah, we'll it look at it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to do the outer um, edge. I'm just going to do the R, and I'm just going to take my paintbrush. You could put a little dollop on there with your spatula if you wanted to. And after you do this so many times, you'll kind of get your own little groove going. But again, we just want to make sure this is a super even, not super thin, but even and you don't want it to be super thick either so just make sure you cover all the corners and don't go outside your stencil oh yeah can you guys see better there okay 
And we are just gonna fill this all the way in. Make sure your stencil's stuck down if it bubbles up. Brenda says, my grandma used to say wash for washing laundry. Oh, Listen, yeah. there's still so many people in our area that say wash. Um, <laughs> my, actually, so when I was in school, this was back years ago now. I was in elementary school, I think. We, um, I had to do a research paper and about Appalachian um, slang and oh, how wow. Appalachian slang is actually the closest uh, most true version of Old English that is still yeah. used today. Stop. I did not know because that. my grandmother used to say for her ears, she used to call them her years, and her earrings were called her year bobs. Year bobs. Year bobs. Wow. Yeah. I've never heard that before. Yeah. That is hilarious. Yeah. Listen, we're just all learning something today. Okay, I'm pulling this off. Speaking of wash, when I went to Nova Scotia, Canada. Someone, we were sharing a bathroom and they asked me, they were like, do you need to use the washroom? And I was so confused because I thought they meant like a laundry room, like yeah. they wash your clothes. Uh -huh. And yeah. I was like, a washroom? And they were like, like to use the bathroom. I was like, oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. It's just crazy. It's like we all speak the same language, but there's different meanings for different words. I know. Okay, I'm just weeding out any small details that I didn't get before. The middles of my letters, all of that. And then we will start the whole burning process, which is the best, most satisfying part of this whole project. You may want, is it still, is the, is the block still pushed up? Because Carol was saying that the closed captioning is covering up your block. Oh no. So push it on up some. Can you guys see it well there with the closed captioning? I want to keep the closed captioning. Yeah, we, we've got to keep the closed captioning. Yeah. Let me know if you guys can do that well or not. So I'm just weaving out all the middles of these letters. Just want to make sure to get it all out before we hit this with the, um, the heat gun because it gets a little aggressive. And sometimes whenever we start burning this, it takes a little bit longer to like see the burn start. With wood and the heat gun, you have to be very careful. Otherwise, you will burn the edges. And I did a little bit in the sample, and we actually may a little bit today too, and that's just the nature of heat and wood. I mean, it's just naturally gonna be happening. Um, but if you let it heat up for a longer amount of time, you don't get so burnt around your edges, if that makes sense. So the lower the heat, but the longer the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You don't yeah. get those burnt edges. And even like further away, if you want to do like the highest heat setting, just keep it further away if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and move. I'm going to move everything out of the way before I start with this heat gun. Um, and that way I don't want to like, you know, it, it'll burn it up. We had someone ask us, how do you guys say ruined? I don't think you really want to know how I say ruined. 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 That's hilarious. <laughs> Well, in Alabama, they say runt. Runt. That's the truth. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start applying the heat. Can you guys see this? Is that good? Okay, because I want you guys to see the magic. I want you to see this happen. And this is a very durable um, tape, like surface. Make sure whatever surface you're using is either like flame retardant or you know, like have something that is not going to be flammable. Make sure everything that would catch fire is not close by. This is not a flamethrower, it's just a heat gun. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being, I'm just being precautionary for you guys. Carol says move everything that is flammable. Been there, done that. Yeah, okay, you're good with the closed captioning now. <laughs> okay, I've got this on the high setting and I'm like six to eight inches away. It's gonna take a while and you're gonna be like, what the heck, it's not working, but it will. You just gotta give it some time. And it'll start turning that brownish black color. Well, Y'all are, ha this is a fun lot today. I'm really having a good time. And I hope you guys are too. I know. Um, the torch paste doesn't require a higher watt heat gun. Um, the scorch marker requires a higher wattage. That's interesting. This one, is, this Wagner is a higher wattage heat gun, um, but I think that I've used the I've used the embossing heat gun that we have on it, and it was fine. But I probably had to do it for much longer. I can't remember exactly. 
Now, the first couple times that we did this, we held it like super close and completely like <laughs> towards the whole thing. Towards the wood. <laughs> now, listen, if you want like a rustic look, go for it. I mean, you can. And I'll, I mean, I'll get a little bit closer so you guys can see it start to change. It also takes a minute for this heat gun to get like to full heatage. And I like to like do one side and then leave the other side undone. <laughs> full heatage. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. A tippy tip. <laughs> a hacky hack. A hacky hack and it. <laughs> Listen, it's just what comes to me, you know? It's okay. <laughs> so if you get thicker, um, like if your paste is thicker, all of this would bubble up. So that's why you want to have a really good thin coat. I'm trying to see if I can get some to start changing for you guys. I don't want to get too crazy. I don't want to get too close. This heat gun. Oh, the Tennessee's starting to change. Can y'all see it? Ooh. Can you see it? Drop a fire emoji if you can see it. Yeah, drop those fire emojis. Drop them. <laughs> Heated. They're making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what would you say? The highest heat? Yeah, yeah. that would make sense. <laughs> now you're just making up new words. Yeah, we like to do that too. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps everybody on their toes. I'm hovering over the Tennessee just so you guys can start to see it change. Cheryl, we are, Cheryl said, I just joined a month ago and I'm so happy I did. We are so happy you did and we're so happy to have yeah, you. That's awesome. For those that are watching while she's getting that heatage up on the heat <laughs> if you have not joined our membership, um, today we are offering $30 off using the code CRAFT for if you sign up for a, as a yearly member. Um, if you don't know what we do, we bring craft education. Um, how is it that Hannah says it? We bring you the education, the motivation, yeah. and the inspiration to get your cricket out and get to making with it. So yes. we have thousands and thousands, well, thousands for sure, because we just released a thousand and sixty-three. Oh, we have at least a thousand and sixty-three. For sure, at least a thousand and sixty-three from last month. Cut files um, and fonts for you guys, and not only that, but education to really learn your Cricut, learn the software, and not only Cricut, we also have a Silhouette course. If you all didn't know, mm -hmm. I re we released a Silhouette course back around, when did it, March? Last month? March, it oh, was March. March, yeah. Cause it was Craft Month, National Craft yeah. Month, and that is free for our members. So, yeah. And sublimation. Allison, I have had my Cricut over a year and it is still in the box. Get what? it out, Come sis. Come on. Get it out. We got to get it out and get it working. You yeah. got to you gotta make your money back. Make that money back with that cricket. Yes. Speaking of making money back, we're also fixing to open up the doors for our Design Make Sell course. So if you are wanting to make money with your craft and you want to start a craft business, um, and really it doesn't even have to be a craft business. This is like... Tanner teaches some amazing, like, just business, like, general business mm -hmm. tips in this course. Um, and, y'all, it's it's going to be litty lit. Listen, if anybody <laughs> knows how to design, make, and sell anything, it's Tanner Bell. Okay? Oh, yeah. He mm -hmm. is so business savvy. We were just talking about this. We were this morning. We're, I, personally, and just... I always have said I want to be very business smart, business savvy, and Tanner is so good and so smart about that stuff. Any, you just want to absorb any information he has to give about mm -hmm. selling things. He's he's amazing at it. Yep. he has a talent, really. Yep, he is. Thingy, they're talking about um, <laughs> what they call something that they don't know what it is. Oh. A thingy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. I actually saved a file in Cricut Design Space the other day as thingy, because I could. <laughs> Of what it was called yeah so you guys can see the that it's starting to burn and you can see the orange is slowly starting to disappear so, it's not so cool allison said i'm scared and i don't have the money to buy into any help courses just watch youtube videos to learn allison if you you don't have to join as a yearly member yeah. if you can if you join as a monthly member you still get access to all of those courses and it's $20 for a month. And if you decide after that first month, you know, I've learned enough. I don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, it is something you can sign up. You don't have to pay all of the money up front for yearly. You do save money in the long run, um, but you can still sign up as a monthly member and still get access to um, our Cricket Bible, the 30 Days to Master Your Cricket, which walks you hand in hand, step through, step, step by step, through everything you need to know about your machine. Um, so it's really like, if nothing else, to be able to go through that course would be worth at least the twenty dollars for the month. Oh, absolutely! But I really think once you get that twenty dollars, like, but I, I think you're gonna be hooked. Oh yeah, it's very easy to. Okay. Listen, my vinyl did not come my dot on my eye, and I checked it, and it was not there. It wasn't even cut out. Um, but just imagine there's a dot over the eye, but like, uh, cute. That's I cute, know. right? I know. I love it. I love it. So this is like a little toasty toast. Let's. Yeah, it's a little. It's not bad. I can touch it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just rotate this over. We're just gonna keep going. We'll keep chit chatting, and um, just make sure you've still got your area cleared. Make sure your heat gun is not like overheating. You know, just be careful and be aware um, when you're using tools like this. It's getting hot in here. Fixing up your room. I'm missing uh, comments. There is. Um, Allison says, that, uh, well, listen, that's okay. You don't have to right now. Continue watching our videos. Yeah. Um, we're still glad that you're here with us. Listen, just you being here watching with us live is, we love that. We love having you. Mm -hmm. um, we completely understand there. A lot of people are in a different, listen, finances right now are hard for everybody. So understand, girlfriend, understand. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay. We're still um, having a good time over here in the lives. Still having a good time. Still <laughs> teaching you guys. Yeah, um, always. So you can still learn, and then maybe later on down the road, when if you are a little more financially stable, you can sign up Come with us then. Yeah, just keep watching us in the meantime, you know. Carol's mentioning using um, scraps to get started, and I feel like that's such a good tip. Like, you can get one roll of vinyl and save all your scraps. You can cut little stickers with those. Oh, and you better believe I'll be sa I, I <laughs> save. I like to save yeah, um, every too. little bit. Before I started working here, um, as most of y'all know, I was a Silhouette user, and I saved every little tiny piece because I never knew when I would need like a little sticker to put uh -huh. here or something to go there. So I really would, I would, I would, uh, I have a wooden crate full of scraps under my cutter at yeah. home, which I use the wood, ugh, I use the U.S. cutter, but I'm about to, I'm converting to Cricut because Cricut's just where it's at. They yeah. just are so good. Um, we do have the dollar deal that if Allison, if you wanted to try the dollar deal, um, the only thing with the dollar deal is I don't think you, you don't get access to the courses. Mm -hmm. You just get the 20, you get to kind of check out the, the website and get 20 free downloads. Mm -hmm. um, whether it be fonts or cut files, you can get 20 free downloads. Yeah. But, and it's for seven days only. Yeah, it's for seven days, but I mean, why don't you go ahead and we'll just drop that for her in case she wants to do that. Just drop that dollar. Yeah. Oh, did you already? You did. Sadie's, Sadie's on, it. on it. Sadie's <laughs> already dropped it. <laughs> green hearts. Two green hearts, not one green heart. <laughs> Lisa has a box full of scraps too. Listen, we all do because you don't want to mm -hmm. get rid of your vinyl. I know. Because you not only, I mean, you can use scraps for stencils. So it's not just especially if there's a color that you don't really like. Yeah. It's great to use for stencils. Listen, I don't know what happens, but like after a minute, this stuff is like, oh yeah, okay, let me kick it into gear. And then it like all turns black really quickly. Yeah. It's like it reaches a certain temperature and, and then, then it's it like, boom. changes, yeah. Lisa, you can go back and rewatch this from the beginning. Um, it is gonna be pre-recorded, so you can always go back mm -hmm. and watch it. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> that was aggressive. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Push it on up a little bit. There we go. Good? Yeah. I didn't think that this, I don't remember it taking so long, so sorry if you guys are, it's like watching paint dry. Just watching yeah. me <laughs> burn the wood. I'm sorry. <laughs> but after we do this, we only have like two more simple steps and then we are done. So I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. 
Um, and make sure when you do this that you're not getting super close to the edges. Like you don't want to go like this because you might start getting crispy around the edges, which looks cute also if that's like the vibe that you want. Um, but if you just want the burned letter part, make sure that you're not getting too close to the edges. Oh, that's a great. Nicole says in the, the we have Makers Gonna Learn has a, um, it maybe it's on the website. She said on the website. Okay. There is the wood burning camping sign. Um, we show you how to make the paste. Wow, that's cool. So if you are a Makers Gonna Learn member, I'm assuming that's gonna be under the, let me double check, get on the website. And that would be under, let's try member only projects. Yeah, probably. And then. It was a camper sign. Yeah, I'm gonna find it. So this one's burning pretty quick, which I'm really close. Listen, like I told you guys not to get close and I still stand by that. Um, but if you wanna go fast, <laughs> if you wanna do it faster, but it, whenever you get close like this, you run the risk of burning up your edges on your block. So it definitely gives it more of a rustic look. Okay, yes. So um, on, if you are a Makers Gonna Learn member, if you will go to the member only projects, type in wood burned camping sign, you can scroll down and watch the video or there is a step-by-step -step how to and the recipe that we have on the website is one tablespoon ammonium chloride, five teaspoons thicket and which is the xanthan gum and mm -hmm. a half a cup of hot water mix and allow to thicken up to three to five minutes that's very interesting da, 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 da. i love that i need a piece of this transfer tape i meant to save it i just need one little baby piece okay so after you guys get everything burned you're gonna have soot so what i like to do is take my piece and I will take just a piece of used transfer tape and literally lay this on top of here and just kind of run my, make sure it's cooled down before you go to do this, which this side is cooler than the top. I'm just gonna kind of press, 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 and then pull it up and you can see it grabs a ton of that soot. So when we go to stain, it's not like smudging around and you can even like just push on it to make sure you're getting if there's any areas that you see like have more, you can kind of go back over them. So that's pretty cool. Little hacky Your hack. Bee says you are killing it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Appreciate Lisa, it. Lisa, um, there is a way that you can gift a month of membership. Um, you will have to um, have the person's email address and then you can email hi at makersgonnalearn.com. Um, Sadie will type that email out for you and drop that, but um, you can gift that, but, but, but just know, but, 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 as I said, <laughs> sorry, uh, just know that you have to have that person's email address so that, that we can get that um, set up for them. Yeah. Okay. So I've, um, basically, look how much that, that's insane. And you could use a lint roller, but we're just using. You could use a lint roller. You could, but. Why waste a sheet of the lint roller when you have leftover transfer Reduce, tape? reuse, recycle, people. Yeah. Okay, and then what we're gonna do next is just stain it. And I never found my screwdriver, so I'm hoping that this just pops open for me. Actually, um, I can use this, I used this guy last time. Yeah, I've used that. You can use weeding tools. There's a lot of things I used to open paint. We get creative around here with our paint opening mechanisms, mm -hmm. our stain opening mechanisms. So this is just a natural wood stain. You don't want to use anything super dark because it's not going to let your letters shine, like they're not gonna pop. Right. So I'm using a natural stain and we will start where we started. We'll start staining where we started burning. I'm just taking my t-shirt and you are literally just gonna go on here, just be very careful like around over top of it. I try not to like wipe. I want to kind of dab. Just, if this were just like a wooden block, I would probably just wipe it on there. But for the purposes of not smearing or burning, I want to just kind of dab. I mean, how cute, you guys. Lena says, definitely enjoying you all. We are enjoying you guys today. Like I'm having such yeah. a good time with you guys. I know, it's been a fun, it's been fun. So I'm gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep working my way around. I, I low-key love the smell of stain. I mean. 
That's bad. One of the bad smells that you shouldn't like. You should not like. I don't like when people... Now, I remember being young liking the smell of gasoline, but I can't stand it now. Mm, I still love the smell of gasoline. <laughs> when, when I was little, I liked the smell of skunk, and that's disgusting to me now. Ugh. Do no, you no, see? Ma'am. Sadie likes it. It smells like coffee to me. What? what? Yeah. No. I, I found out my nose is scientifically correct because there's like a chemical oh. in coffee that is in the chemical of the skunk spray. The exact same chemical. So if a skunk smells like coffee to you, that means that you have a scientifically correct nose. Yes. Huh. The Lord gave you a good sniffer. <laughs> I don't know about that because she couldn't smell that trash this morning, y'all. <laughs> there was some shrimp. There was some shrimp rotting in this building, and it was so bad. Okay, um, I'm just gonna stain this back square so the whole thing is stained. But y'all, honestly, this one turned out like better than my sample project. Okay, let's go overhead. Oh, so, wow, that is so good. Isn't it cute? You guys, I love it. Here's the sample one. So it's a little bit smaller. But, like, I love these. You can go ahead in front so you guys can see it from far away. But Ty says we need to mic Sadie. Honestly, we, hey, might, we, we do. Have, there is a mic back there. She needs to start picking it up. Is it on? It's on. I Sadie sounds like a Disney princess. <laughs> Sadie sounds and looks like a Disney princess. So yeah. I don't even know if they know what you look like, but she's always behind the scenes. So, anyways, it's like way past time. Well, it's 2 40. It's not terrible. It's not um, that. I'm going to come over and sit with Warren. Okay. Let me put the cap on this stain so it don't keep stinking in here. Well, smelling good if you're me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do we have any questions? Um, somebody did say, like, you need to, like, yes, it would be great, like, to finish all of the sides. Um, mm -hmm. You can do, like, if you wanted to do the hand on the other side and do Ruby's name on the, like, opposite sides, that way it's like a block. Whether you roll it, you can come up you with something. You can see it all the time. Yeah, see that would be sides. great. Yeah. Um, we were just doing this because uh, we just wanted to make sure you got the different techniques that you could yeah. use um yeah and we listen if we would have done all six sides one two three four yeah six i was like i'm trying to one two three four we would have still been over there with that little heat gun trying to get that torch face to change mm -hmm. yes yeah <laughs> well i think it turned out super cute and i had so much fun with you guys i hope that y'all enjoyed the project and I hope if you're not a member that today was the day that you were like, I want to join this community because yeah. we do. We have so much fun over here. We do. We're always, y'all, follow us on TikTok. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> we <laughs> has been going hard on TikToks, okay? So, so I guess I was <laughs> one of the first ones that kind of started. If you mm -hmm. all can't, if you do follow us on TikTok, I like to do the funny ones. Like, yes. I like to be the, I like to, um, it's good. It, yeah, but it, and, and I'm a little extra. Yeah, there's a lot of times I'm a little extra, and I I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. It's good. It's but great. anyway, <laughs> um, Sadie came up with a new. We're gonna start a new series on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Our favorite Amazon finds. Yes. That is going to be lit. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. And also the one Sadie and Lauren did one yesterday. Yeah. It involves a pool, so I'll just leave it there. Yeah. It involves the pool. <laughs> I got to get in the pool yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Would have needed drinks and really have fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Ty said you're hilarious on TikTok. It's the truth. That's the facts. I guess I really like get to let my hair down and be fun yeah. and like Yeah. I mean, I'm myself here. Yeah. But I really get to like express herself. Express mm -hmm. my, I don't know, funny side on TikTok, and I love it. Yeah. Yep. All right. uh, I love the throwing yourself in the trash. Can I just say that was not me? Was an I did. That was a complete accident. The <laughs> fact that I fell in the trash can, mm -hmm. I did not mean to do that. I meant to actually step into the trash can and just stand there. But I fell back in the trash can. She committed after I, you fell. After I, I, I felt myself falling, and I just went with it. Yeah. I was just like, whatever. At this point, <laughs> it's we're, happening. I, it's happening. I'm falling. Um, oh, so so yeah, that just just know that that was not planned. That was a that mm -hmm. was a um, <laughs> happy what, accident. No, but what am I? That was a blooper. A that blooper. Was, oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Love it. Wow. Um, can y'all make a live on sublimation pins? So the sublimation pins is just like, um, are you talking about the, um, the cricket? I don't know what sublimation pins are. I have not heard of that before. Is it like, oh my gosh, y'all, I just went completely blank. 
Is it um, something you use to the, sell? The, I can't think right now. Help us out. Help us Tell out. us what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Cricket Joy, do we have, I think we may have a couple videos on our YouTube. If you'll just go to our YouTube and I think you can search our YouTube page mm -hmm. um, where you just come up with, like you can search if we have Cricket Joy videos. I'm sure there yeah. are some down in there. I oh, there know, definitely are, yeah. I know there are lots of card making videos. Oh yeah, for sure. Yes. Infusible ink pens. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. That is what I meant. <laughs> um, yes, I think we do have training on that too. Y'all have to realize um, we are, <laughs> Still fairly new with mm -hmm. Makers Gonna Learn. Yeah. I've not even been here a full year. Um, Alicia started in January, so what they did pr prior to us, um, we go back and rewatch things so that we know what we're talking about when y'all ask us questions. Mm -hmm. But when we say there are thousands of videos on there, there's so there's, there's literally so like many. I think there are 17, 15 to seventeen hundred videos. Yeah, yeah. So. so we've not been able to watch all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're welcome to browse. Yeah, <laughs> there's lots yes. of options. They so. have pens that you can sublimation. We might if it's now I know infusible ink is the same as sublimation, mm -hmm. but I don't know if there's a different like brand. I know Cricut has the infusible ink. I don't know if there's yeah. a different brand. We'll maybe we'll have to look into that. We can play around with it. Yeah. Um, All right. Does anyone else have any other questions? Mm -hmm. Any? Great. Well, I mean, we are lagged too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gas is too expensive to accidentally waste on my hands now. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. That's, Same. that's when you really know that you Same. love it. Uh huh. Oh yeah. No, I need a gas daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Not okay, a sugar you're done. You're done. Okay, <laughs> we'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.